G'day guys, welcome back to Stat Chat Sports. You're here with uh, me and BT. Josh is still away in the twos uh, on the long-term injury reserve. Um, yeah, we're here for the review. Uh, as always, we will look at our hits and misses. Uh, a few different indifferent performances, a few bounce back performances from a few teams. But uh, we'll start with the hit. Uh, where are we going, BT? So there wasn't a huge amount of games we could have chosen for this. We could have probably gone Brisbane, playing away from home, beating Carlton, but we've gone with Collingwood. And the reason is, if you look at, because we like to talk about our stats here, if you look at the stats in this game, uh, they lost the uncontested by 100 and lost the marks by 60. So Sydney just killed them on the outside, but they still won comfortably. They, they got challenged, especially in the first half, but we know Collingwood's probably the best side in the comp at the moment, uh, the most exciting side as well. But And we just want to talk about this game with everything that happened with the whole Nick Dacos, the <laughs> Ryan Clark kicking that goal, yeah. um, the Buddy Franklin booing. Yeah, uh, it was a it was a good game to watch, I think. Yeah, it, it's been a bit of a hotbed for, for oh, controversy, but, but drama, I think, this game. It's just there's so much that's gone on. It, the footy is almost a backstory. At this point, it's 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 in the background and it's just something that happened around the the, the two incidents we'll call them, but um yeah the, the from the statistical uh, side it really just shows Col uh, Collingwood's brand it, it, it isn't to dominate uh it, it's not to dominate possession it's they're, they're more effective with the ball and Sydney can they can bounce the ball around all they want but obviously it's just not going to work against a, a team as well drilled as as Collingwood. I mean, that back line, I mean, I don't know how many times I've seen <clears throat> Darcy Moore with the ball in his hands. He's um, he's a gun back there. He's just a rock. Um, he's yeah. even quality Col with, with the ball as well. As a full yeah. back, centre half back, his disposal is it's unreal. And um, if you're getting that from one of a key defender, that's and then you're adding a Maynard, a Dacos, um, a Noble, a Quayna, all of these players, that running half and Everyone in that defense just knows how to use the ball. I love him as captain for that team. Uh, I think he's just the perfect fit. He's obviously a good user of the ball. He's a good reader of the ball. He just knows where to be. And he clearly, oh, we saw it at the Anzac Day game. His speech there was, yeah. it was the, probably the best I've heard an AFL player talk, at least personally for me, and, and maybe ever. He's so well spoken. It was just, ah. Uh, He's got the whole package. I think he's uh, he's a great player. But um, back to the the whole Dacos incident. What do we make of that? Do you do you like it? Do you think the getting in his face is is it warranted? Like, do we need to be doing that? Well, I mentioned this to you. I think a few weeks ago when we were watching the Port Adelaide St Kilda game together, I said that a team needs to go up. He was just dominating around the ground in every game. He was doing what he wanted. So I let I want you want to see something a little bit different. And this is exactly what I wanted to see. Um, it what made it worse for on the Collingwood side was Brian Clark kicked a goal. That's yeah. and it and they went straight up to Dacos. I know even at the start of the game they're bumping him and everything like that. But as soon as your oh, opposition, his direct kicks opponent, a, your direct opponent kicks yeah. a goal, especially a tagger um, on a quality player like Nick Dacos, uh, it, it was going to be on. And when you got Papley in your side, it's always going to blow over. It's going to make things worse. So. I don't mind it. It may have got out of hand a little bit, but I, I like the the concept. Of what Sydney was going for there, it did shake him up a bit. He didn't. Ha he still had a good game. He still had twenty five disposals. That's seventy percent, which is quality game. But he didn't have his forty at eighty five percent. So um, yeah. it, uh, it worked to that extent. They still lost the game because Collingwood don't rely on just Nick Dacos to win. But I, I don't mind it. I think it went over the top, but I don't mind it. Yeah, absolutely. I I, I agree there. I mean, it had the desired effect to a point. I mean, they didn't win the game, but he was clearly rattled. And, I mean, just if you take that goal, if you take that just by itself, uh, the Clark goal, it probably shows how unaccountable Dacos can be from a defensive standpoint. If you do have an attacking matchup, if you if you match him up with someone that's a little bit more attacking, obviously they're probably going to, Dacos is going to damage you the other way. But he's not that accountable defensively. No. And it shows that... Really, he's just, he's not there to defend. I know that. But when you're sitting in that defensive six or somewhere between there, you've got to be 
that's somewhat accountable for defending. And, I mean, he, it's not his job, but he will get found out one day. And he was found out in that situation. And, yeah, I, I, I personally, I think it's fine. Uh, it may have got out of hand, but I like... A player like Dacos needs to be roughed up like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's, he's so key for Collingwood. That's the problem. If you want to beat Collingwood, you have to get through Dacos. If you let him run, they will beat you every time. Yeah, exactly. He's arguably the best player in the competition as a 20-year-old. So he's just going to get better and better every game. So these things, this actually may improve him even more. Coming off this, he, um, well, tune into one of our later videos in the ball predictions. You might hear something about the Dacos brothers or so. Oh, so here we go. <laughs> But I yeah, I didn't mind I that. What do you make of the yeah. Buddy Franklin bully? I, I I don't really get it. I, I don't I don't understand it. I mean, I I don't see the point. Uh, I I think it's just a bit silly, to be honest. I, yeah, I don't know what to say. I think it's just a bit fruitless and a bit silly. Oh, it's been. I don't know why they're bullying, but it's also been blown out of proportion all over social yeah. media and everything. I. I don't understand what's the big deal about it. it players get booed. Look at Horn Francis. He's getting booed nearly every game and it's nothing to do. He's a second-year um, player. Um, we, we, oh, don't get me started <laughs> yeah, on that. Exactly. I, I really don't understand that. That's just insane. So I, I don't understand. I don't think we really need to talk about that much more. But one other thing I want to talk about with this game is the uh, my check goal. How do you see that going in the... Goal of the, the year? Goal of the year. Oh, jeez, it was good, wasn't it? Oh, it was. That was cool. Yeah, I mean, there seemed some good angles from the crowd and stuff, and it looked even better from the angle from behind. So it, it's a really unique goal. I mean, yeah, you've got plenty of those snaps. You get, like, I mean, Ashcroft's goal from the round before. That was a great goal. Don't get me wrong. But he had, Majek had no control of this ball at any point until it the ball hit his foot, in which yeah. he clearly planned. It wasn't accidental. He, he knew what he was trying to do. And that's the thing I love about this. It was, he had zero control, but it was premeditated. Uh, Ashcroft had minimal control, I get, but his, his hands were still on the ball. Mm. This it, They're two different kicks, in my opinion. That's the thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, See, I personally I love... like the Ashcroft one better, personally. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I I don't know. I just like how, how he controlled it and... Uh, yeah, it's just like we said, it's completely different goals. Mm. As they both, yeah. I think it's going to be hard to beat either of those. One of those is winning it. I can't see anything else really beating that, either of those. Yeah, I think you nailed it there. Yeah, they're both goal of the equality goals. And, and, and if come Brownlow night, we do see that winning, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised and I wouldn't be mad either way. I think you take both of those goals every day of the week. I, I probably like the mind check one. I don't know. I just think it's it's unique. It's it's not something we see very often. It was basically a, a bicycle kick, really. Mm-hmm. Um, just, yeah, he probably didn't get as vertical as, as say, uh, the Renatos of the world would, would <laughs> while doing it. But, um, yeah, still two two very good goals and yeah, worthy winners good. on the day. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, let's move over to our miss, which we don't really... Don't need to spend too much time on this. There wasn't actually a huge amount of teams we could have chosen from, but where are we going with this one? Look, uh, we're going to go to the Friday night matchup. I believe this was the, this was the game. Was this game of the week? It was. It, it was. was. Yeah. It, and I mean, this is probably what was more shocking with this. I mean, we expected two decent teams to turn up here. Um, only one did, unfortunately. And it was, it was the home team. This is what was really bad for me. I mean, Brisbane, oh, it's Carlton, by the way, but I'm going to speak more about Brisbane first. Uh, they are meant to be a horribly travelled team. I mean, generally, they don't play as great at the Gabba. Um, as soon as they, oh, sorry, they don't play as great outside of the Gabba. They play great at the Gabba. Mm-hmm. Um, Travel to Marvel, and they made Carlton look absolutely second rate. They were, they were poor all night. I mean... Brisbane were far and away the better side and they really nullified the two big dogs. Yeah, exactly. That's what you have to do with this Cullen team. Um, the first half, it was reasonably close. Brisbane 
got the first, I think, four goals or so, or maybe five of the first six or something like that. They Carlton came out. back. Yeah, Carlton came back a bit, but then second half, Brisbane just kicked away easy. Um, especially Dunkley with the quadruple double, the dominating 170 fantasy points. Yeah. It's just, um, I, yeah. I, every time I looked at, at the TV, Dunkley was there. It was insane. Yeah, yeah he loves playing at Marvel. He does. Um, even Lockie Neal, he loves playing at Marvel as well. But let's talk about this Carlton team. The, the definition of a good team on paper. You look all over the park. They've mm. got quality players everywhere. They just can't put it together. I don't know what it is. I don't know if they're all two individual type players um, compared to like a Collingwood team where they share the ball around. They don't. All they want to do is win. Where you can see, I don't. I don't know. I don't watch enough of Carlton, but they've got just they've got key players and star players everywhere. And they just can't put it together. Yeah, I, I, for a team to have two common medalists and a brown low medalists in the same team, it, it, it's quite it's quite shocking how they can't put it together. Uh, I mean that that midfield is so stacked. It's the uh, so you've got yeah yeah Cripps, Chera, Hewitt, um, oh, Kennedy, Walsh, sub. Walsh, yeah Walsh is only mm-hmm. missing one top one. Doherty. <laughs> uh, yeah Doc when he goes in and he's mm-hmm. equally good down back. You've got Sard down back. I mean, it, Newman's been pretty good this season too. I don't know if mm-hmm. I mean, it, this this team is so much less than the sum of their parts. Like you talk about teams, say Collingwood. I mean, there's I wouldn't say there's that many star names in that team. There's a lot of good role players in that team that really make things happen. Um, but maybe Carlton have too much star quality. Maybe that's their problem. I, I don't know. Um, it, it seems like a, a, a weird thing to say, but I don't know. Maybe this, is it an ego thing? Is it just, they think they, they can just get it done week in, week out without trying their hardest. I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's hard to put a finger it, on it. It's just, they, they've got these players there, but they're just not winning. I just, yeah. I don't know if it's coming down to more of the, we we can't keep saying it's come down to coaching. We can't say that. They've had that many different coaches over the last 10 years and they've always had a good list on paper. Um, yeah. They've always had that there, but they just can't put it together. But, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know where they go from here, honestly. Yeah. No, nah, Carlton, I mean, I, I was only saying to someone yes uh, the other day, I was like, where, where does this club go? I mean, they've gone round in circles, for years now. Um, I mean, it's not all doom and gloom. They're still sitting at the top eight, but this is, I mean, it, it all comes back to probably a, a defensive uh, injury crisis of, of sorts. I mean, they can never keep a, a fit defence, which is just, I don't know, it seems to be a problem that plagues them every season. But at, at some point, injuries, they, they can cruel your season every season, but... Not every year, but at some point you've just got to get past that. And I mean, I think there's enough in this list to get past that right now. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm at a loss to explain why why they're just constantly that bad. Yeah, I completely agree. Anyway, that's it for our hits and misses. Um, leave a comment below if you agree. If we if you thought a different team was a miss or a different team was a hit, um, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and thanks for tuning in. Cheers.